Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Another entry here in my series, this one based on a very recent suggestion, very very recent in fact, and this is absolutely perfect. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that I look for. It's original, it's very well known in other parts of the world, but for us here in the United States, this is something that is just completely out there, and yet there it is in other parts of the world commonly known very freaky stuff and when I go over this particular cryptid you'll realize that this is not something that you want to come across with yourself it is a very very well-known cryptid in Africa um, in fact it's probably what the equivalent is of say like the Duende is to Mexico or the gremlin is here to the United States this particular cryptid is there to Africa and what I'm talking about is the cryptid that's known as the uh, Ticolo Shea although there are other variations of how it's talked about and it's also mentioned as being called the Tocolo Shea so give or take it's either with a T-I or a T-O as to its particular name for the sake of this uh, this video I'm gonna call it the T coloche I'll use the I and then that way um, if others use the O uh, I've seen it but I haven't seen it as frequently as the I and you'll see a picture of it here a nasty little thing and the reason why um, it is so feared in Africa is because of how it looks how it acts the torment that it gives to the people that it targets and the key word is target because this is a cryptid that is not free will this is a cryptid that is apparently summoned by a specific person to do harm to others so it is not a good thing to have around if you come across this particular cryptid you are in trouble so what is the T. Coloche? Um, again you'll see a picture of it here it's a nasty little gremlin looking thing that is found in Africa, particularly in South Africa. Although the interesting thing about the Ticoloche is that it is not something born, uh, let's say, like a regular animal is. Not a not like a, like you would imagine like any other cryptids that we've talked about where we can conceive that they were just created naturally um, somewhere in this world they are there um, and they were not manufactured here the T. Coloche is manufactured it's actually created by uh, witchcraft it's created by shamans they are a group like witch doctors if you will people that have taken something and have used their witchcraft to create this creature and the sole purpose of them being created the Ticoloche is at the request of yet another person somebody who hired the witch doctor to create torment for one of their targets so it's as basic and as simple as that the Ticoloche is created because someone wanted to target someone else and they used the witch doctor as the means for it very very creepy when you think about it because who knows you could create if you're in South Africa you could create an enemy out of somebody and this enemy will then think to themselves if I'm gonna get rid of this person what better way to do so than to utilize something that can never be traced back to me and the T. Coloche is absolutely perfect for this in fact um, it's been known that the T. Coloche's attacks are mainly caused to create like let's say damage cause some harm maybe some um, light nuisance here and there but it have even been extended to actually also creating death upon the target of the witch doctor and upon the target of the other person that was hired or that hired the witch doctor for the hunt and the Ticoloche is apparently created from dead bodies and so what the witch doctor does is they find a recent dead body um, South Africa they'll probably just go to the nearest 
cemetery or the nearest location where all the dead bodies are. They probably may even go to areas that are still heavily infested with civil wars, the kind of areas where they're always ripe for dead bodies. And once they do so, the witch doctor finds a recent dead body, and then using the witchcraft that they have, they create the Ticoloche. How they do it, I don't know. Um, th that's something else completely different. But whenever the Ticoloche is created, there's some key things that occur. And this is done to help control the Ticoloche because this particular cryptid is pretty much at its master's whim. Um, it is created for the sole purpose of being almost like a slave to the uh, the witch doctor. And once it's created, uh, this is what the witch doctor does to create that servitude. It essentially rips a hole straight through the head, which was, as you'll see, like a drawing of here. And it also gouges out the eyes of the Ticoloche. Uh, and then at the same time, it rips out the tongue of the Ticoloche too. It does those three things because the sole purpose of doing this by the witch doctor is to ensure that it cannot think for itself and it can't see what's basically happening around it and at the same time it can't talk to others and this ensures that the Ticoloche is basically living for the sole purpose of getting orders from others which kind of makes sense in a way that um, if you want to ensure that there's no kind of creative thinking for this particular monster, this particular cryptid, then remove its brain, have it so that it can't really see the world around it, but somehow it can still maneuver around the world without even seeing, and then rip out its tongue so that way it cannot talk to others and basically learn what's going on with itself. Um, it's very similar to um, one of the best movies ever, the Terminator 2 movie, there's that deleted scene where um, it's, it's the Terminator kind of reveals that it has like a CPU in it, but it's turned to an off switch where it can't start thinking for itself because it was created for a sole purpose of hunting. Same thing happened here, um, which was very interesting to note. So once the T-Cloche is created, by the way, the body when those strings, these three things happen to it, it shrinks. And that's another interesting and very common feature of this cryptid. It's the size of a child, but it's a man-sized child. And at the same time, it looks like a gremlin. And in other cases, it's been described as having a completely hairy body like that of, let's say, a, a miniature bear. So imagine something like the size of a little person, but looking like this, something like a gremlin, something that looks zombie-like even, as it's been described. And with the eyes gouged out, and then with the hole in the head, and no doubt with the unsettling appearance of either its hairy or hairy-less body, then you have something that is very, very creepy to see. Um, that's also the, another interesting thing about the Ticoloche. It can only be seen by its target, and also, interestingly enough, by children. Nobody else can see it. So the Tigoloche can walk around and basically go to its target, and it'll be unfettered. There'll be nobody that'll see it, so there'll be nothing that could get to it in its way. Only children can see it, but children, nobody would believe them. Um, you, you and I have by now heard of the tales of children pointing at something and saying, you know, oh, I see something, or anything involving children having that imaginary friend and parents of course will just knock it off as saying oh it's just them pretending as if there's somebody there but all this time who knows it could have been something like this and I mentioned this because also on an interesting point the Ticoloche um, while it has this mischievous programming and it has in some cases a deadly intent when it comes to its victims one of its weak points is children. Um, it apparently enjoys having interaction with children. Uh, maybe it sees the innocence of children. Maybe it sees the commonness of children with regards to its height. But for whatever purpose, when it comes across children, it actually tries 
to befriend children on a constant basis. This is also very, very common within the uh, South African culture to the point where in their perspective, at, you know how at least here in the U.S., we just simply play it off as, oh, it's just innocent. The child is just having an imaginary friend, nothing to worry about. In South Africa, when this happens, everybody instantly thinks, oh, no, the child is actually interacting with and when that happens, then they really tell the child to knock it off and they go through court through uh, several rituals or several methods to ensure that whatever the child was interacting with is, um, if for all intents and purposes, this particular cryptid that that is stopped altogether. And then once the uh, Ticoloche actually finds its target, then again it goes through its programming. It goes through its intention, which is to ensure that whatever it finds, it'll either torment or in some cases it'll have the actual killing of the uh, the person the, that the other person that hired the witch hunter to create the Tika Loche, um, then it's done. It is completely finished. Creepy, creepy stuff. Imagine something like that. Imagine something that could just wander around on its own. Something that is completely just invisible. Some reports state that it's it's done so because it swallows like a special pebble of sorts to become invisible. Others state that it only becomes invisible um, I guess when it's on the hunt, I don't know, but whenever it comes to this, there's the idea that it does this, you could have one walking around you and running around, just playing, jumping, um, whatever, and you would have no idea, it could be around, maybe you'll even have the occasional, uh, let's say, draft, like the occasional wind, like as if something just really just passed you really fast, but it, you don't see it, you don't hear it, and yet it could be one of these particular creatures. Ew, it's creepy, isn't it? It's the idea that something like this is out there in South Africa, uh, which, by the way, is also another interesting thing to note. Um, it apparently is just commonly found in South Africa. There's no really other known place when it comes to uh, the Tico Leche. Um, I tried to see if there was any other location, but no, nothing along those lines, nothing else in terms of another area where that happens. Now, how to get rid of a Tico Leche, there's two methods to do so. Um, one is if you're the actual target, one way, the most direct way, is to have like a another witch doctor hired to help stop this so you, instead of and that sounds strange but in, instead of actually coming towards the actual witch doctor that created Tickle Shade, no you hire another one to combat whatever this cryptid is and maybe that uh, witch doctor that you hired does so by either attacking using witchcraft on the Tico Leche or on the other witch doctor itself but that's one particular method the other method is interesting to note because of the almost simplistic way you can stop the Tico Leche not harming you directly but at least making sure that um, that you yourself won't be impacted too much and this is the way it is those that think that there's some kind of attack happening and it's tied to a Tico Leche, um, the way that people get around it is because of the height of this particular cryptid, there's only a certain point, a certain vantage point that it can reach. And so what people do is whenever they think, oh my goodness, in you know, these past couple of days, there's this thing, and I know that it's been a Tico Leche that's been attacking me, then what they do is they place rocks or bricks on their bed, right underneath their bed post. And the sole reason for this is to elevate the bed to a particular height. And the idea is that when these creatures come out, and apparently they seem to come out at night, and that seems to be their preferred method to attack, then your destination um, standing on top of the bed essentially you'll be at a height much higher than the Tico Loche and it can't do anything it can't for whatever reason jump on the bed it can't 
uh, land on the bed from any other place too. Instead, it'll be so frustrated that it'll take it out on everything else around you. So it'll smash things, it'll grab things, it'll throw things, uh, other dresser boards, other tables, chairs, the flooring itself, anything along those lines, it'll just run around creating havoc. Um, it may be visible to you when it's being, this is being done. It may be invisible to you. It again depends on the uh, stories that are tied to the Ticoloche, but for whatever purpose, it just can't jump on the bed itself. And when that happens, uh, the Ticoloche apparently becomes so frustrated that it, after a certain point, it just leaves on its own. I mean, it stops right there. And when that happens, then the job is done to some certain extent. Um, either the witch doctor that was hired, the, you know, either to cancels out altogether or maybe on their end they just need more payments and the other person can provide it but for all intents and purposes that's it um, then this the attack stops and so those are the two ways to try to get rid of a ticoloche another indirect way is maybe to try to appease to this particular cryptid and the idea is another one of their weaknesses is milk especially curried milk, as strange as that sounds. And so if you know that you're surrounded um, by attacks from a ticoloche, leave something as far as milk outside. Um, and when this happens, then it favors this particular uh, drink. And when that, whenever that occurs, it could be that the ticoloche comes over, but it doesn't create any kind of havoc. And then finally, another indirect way is especially this is recommended if you can actually see this particular cryptid for whatever sense purposes if you can see it because the idea is again it's completely invisible to adults except for children but if you do see it ignore it like don't pay attention to it as hard as it seems in some cases with the way it can knock things around and in some cases also hit and hurt the people themselves ignore it completely it seems to follow the idea that like much other paranormal entities um, people have reported that if you ignore the paranormal entities then the, then those entities tend to go away same concept when it comes to this cryptid it's the idea that if it if you don't believe in it then it doesn't exist and then that's when it stops too crazy crazy stuff I found the story too about um, a woman uh, regarding the Ticoloche and that's what she had done she first posted um, the bricks on her bed and that way her bread was uh, elevated and then the Ticoloche just stormed out like it was something where it was so mad at the fact that it could not attack the woman directly it instead took it out on the entire house and then that was it that was it all together crazy crazy stuff uh, so again this is something that you do not want to run into this is while in most cases it just creates some damage and in some cases some hurt it also uh, if, it, if, if it's hired for the right target it can actually harm and kill people so if anyone has any stories tied to this cryptid uh, apparently again it's a very very common well-known cryptid it's part of not just culture there but it's something that people um, are f in fear of it's something that they're actually believing uh, that's 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 out there as common as let's say the lion or as common as let's say uh, the crow itself they consider the tikula shade to be that way as well so if anyone has any stories tied to this you know please post anything below it'd be fascinating to hear about anything tied uh, for experiences on this cryptid. If anyone has any other tales too about other places that this cryptid has followed or the cryptid has gone to, uh, it'll be fascinating to see that too. Um, but a very, very good suggestion and I'm happy to see that um, when it comes to my Cryptids and Monsters videos, this particular entry uh, remains one of the best ones yet. So great, great stuff. Alright everybody, thanks again as always. Take care.